Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yahad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Able Den On Air has been seen in the following publications. Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists. Welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lawrence Siren. I'm Lawrence Siren. And um, before we begin our show today, we would like to thank our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and many others, including the support um, from including partners such as Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity and uh, uh, Yakard New York and New England, the Orthodox Union, and many others, also including the Montpelier, um, the Sustainable Montpelier Coalition and uh, the Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont and the Division for the Blind of, um, the Division for the Blind and visually impaired of Vermont. Um, on this show today, which will also air, if it's airing now or is going to air now, it will also air in January in time for Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. Um, also, we talk about Martin Luther King Jr.'s work and the Poor People's Campaign. Um, anything you want to say before we begin? Yeah. You know, so, if I was her shoes, I would do the same thing, you know. Yeah, I, December first uh, they had to fight for their rights, you know. December first, nineteen fifty five was the um was the yeah. bus the bus boycott in um in Alabama. Yeah. yeah. Um so Martin Luther King Junior uh was born January fifteenth, nineteen twenty nine, and he was a, an American Baptist minister and activist who became most, the most visible spokesperson and leader in the American Civil Rights Movement. From 1955 until his assassination in 1968, King, King advanced civil rights through nonviolence and civil disobedience that inspired by his Christian beliefs and the nonviolent activism of Mahatma Gandhi. M M a H A T M A Gandhi. Uh, he was the son of civil rights activist and Minister Martin Luther King Sr. Yeah. King participated and led marches for blacks' right to vote, 
desegregation, labor rights, and basic civil rights. King led the 1955 Montgomery bus boycott with um, with Rosa Parks, you know, when Rosa Parks... Uh, yeah, Rosa Parks, she, she, she didn't want to give her a seat on the bus and they arrested her. Mm-hmm. Um, King led the 1955 Montgomery bus boycott and later became the first president of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, SCLC. As president of the SCLC, um, he led he led the unsuccessful uh, Albany <clears throat> Albany movement in Albany, Georgia, and helped organize some of the nonviolent 1963 pro protests in Birmingham, Alabama. King helped organize the 1963 march on Washington, where he delivered his famous "I Have a Dream" speech on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. The SCLC put into practice tactics of nonviolent protest and some strategically choosing the methods and places in which protests were carried out. There were several dramatic standoffs with segregationist authorities who sometimes turned violent. The Federal Bureau of Investigation Director J. Edgar Hoover considered King a radical and made him an object of the FBI's con contel, the FBI's contel pro, uh, probe from 1963 forward. The uh, FBI agents uh, investigated, <clears throat> sorry, um, FBI agents investigated him for possible communist ties, recorded his um, extramarital affairs and reported them to government officials. In 1964, uh, Hoover mailed King a threatening anonymous letter which was interpreted as an attempt to make him commit suicide. On October 14th, and this is all from Wikipedia, um, on October 14th, 1964, King uh, won the Nobel Peace Prize for combating radical inequality through nonviolent resistance. In 1965, he helped organize uh, two of the three Selma to Montgomery marches. In his final years, he expanded his focus to include op op opposition towards property, Capitalism and the Vietnam War. In 1968, King was planning a national occupation of Washington, D.C. to be called the Poor People's Campaign, which he was assassinated on April 4th in Memphis, Tennessee. His, his death followed by riots in U.S. cities, allegations that James Earl Ray, the man convicted of killing King had been framed or, or acted, um, acted in concert of government agents persisted for decades. After the shooting, King was pro, pro, posthumously um, awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 1977 and the Congressional Medal of Honor in 2003. Martin Luther King Jr. Day was established as a holiday uh, in cities and states throughout the United States beginning in 1971. The holiday was enacted by, on the federal level uh, by legislation signed by President Ronald Reagan in 1986. Hundreds of streets in the U.S. have been named in his honor. The, and the most populous County in Washington State <coughs> was rededicated to him. Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial on the National Mall uh, in Washington, D.C. was dedicated in 2011. Early life, and by the way, I want to show this book. <coughs> the autobiographic, the 
The Autobiography of Martin Luther King Jr., uh, edited by Claiborne Carson. Um, you can, you, you, uh, anybody that is watching can um, get this book at um, any bookstore. And um, it has pretty good pictures in here. Um, I'm just showing it. Pretty good pictures in here, but it details his life. Um, the birth, life, and education of Martin Luther King. Um, King was born Michael, uh, Michael King Jr. on January 25, 1929 in Atlanta, Georgia, and um, the second of three children, uh, Michael King, Alberta King, and uh, King's mother named him Michael, which was entered on his birth certificate by attending physician King's older sister, Christine King uh, Farris, and his younger brother, Alfred um, King's, you know, so you can go to wikipedia.com and look up uh, his um, family tree. It talks about his early childhood, um, his uh, Morehouse College, um, degrees and the sit-ins and all this other thing. But uh, what I really want to talk about is the Poor People's Campaign, which uh, King started. So let's go to that website. Uh, for more information on the Poor People's Campaign, you can go to www.poorpeoplescampaign.org, um, which was started by Martin Luther King. Um, so let's uh, talk about the covenant of nonviolence, which is important because Martin Luther King really uh, talked about that. Poor People's Campaign, the, the National Call for Moral Revival, covenant of nonviolence. There's at least 140 million people in this country who are impacted by interlocking injustices of systematic racism, poverty, um, and... Um, 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 ecological devastation, militarism, and the false narrative of Christian uh, nationalism and other religions. Um, the Poor People's Campaign believes that nonviolent struggle, uh, struggle has the power to end injustices, such as um, respect towards all, um, speaking about truth and power, and not to defeat injustices of the people. Uh, which which includes, um, you know, healthcare and um, different things. Now, during the pandemic, um, the Poor People's Campaign has been uh, working on healthcare, a COVID nineteen testing, and uh, a, a bunch of things. Um, number two, guarantee quality healthcare for all, regardless of pre existing condition. Um, and they are, they're also trying to um, get better wages. They're also trying to um, enact fair taxes for people. And they're also trying, the Poor People's Campaign uh, is trying to advocate on the president's agenda of, um, you know, for better health care despite age gender, sexual orientation, di disability, and so on. Um, so, uh, yeah, enact federal jobs programs to build up investments, infrastructure, public institutions, climate resilience, uh, energy efficiency, socially, uh, socially beneficial industries, and jobs in poor and low-income communities. Anything you want to say about that? Um, jobs in low-income communities. Well, they should have jobs, you know, um, you know, where people need it the most because they go beyond the po po poverty line. And, and you know, they need, they need certain assistance, they need help, you know, they don't want to go above the poverty line, you know. And the poor... They want to make them, you know, better to make them work. 
Mm-hmm. And the poor, the poor people, the poor people's campaign uh, expands public and affordable housing and rental assistance, stops yeah. all foreclosures, evictions immediately, enact a rent freeze, including stopping all creases in rent and cancels rent and mortgage payments that cannot be paid, yeah. moves the burden of proof off renters and households that are facing eviction to the financial interest and in seeking evictions. Mm -hmm. You know. So, okay. um, so yeah, for... Yeah, people want to get off the homeless. Uh... Yeah, so more, more information on the Poor People's Campaign, you can go to www.poorpeoplescampaign.com dot org forward slash resource policy and legislative priorities. <clears throat> the King family was living in Montgomery for less than a year when a highly segregated city became the epicenter for the burgeoning struggle <clears throat> of civil rights in America. Galvanizing by a landmark of Brown versus Board of Education decision in 1954, on December 1st, 1955, Rosa Parks, secretary, uh, a secretary of, of the local chapter of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP, refused, she refused to give up her seat to a white passenger on the Montgomery uh, bus and was arrested. Um, activists coordinated the bus boycott and would continue for 381 days. The Montgomery bus boycott placed a severe economic strain on public transit systems in downtown with downtown business owners. They chose Martin Luther King Jr. as the protest leader and official smoke, uh, spokesman. By the time the Supreme Court ruled, um, of segregated seating on public buses unconstitutional in November of 1956. King, heavily influenced by Mahatma Gandhi um, and activist Bayard Rustin, had entered the national spotlight on an international proponent and organized nonviolent resistance. King had also become a target of white supremacists and firebombed his home in that January. On, uh, we only have a couple minutes left. So on, um, on September 20, 1958, Isola Ware Curry walked into a Harlem department store. Let me um, go here. Um, walked into a, a Harlem department store where King was signing books and asked, are you Martin Luther King? When he replied yes, she stabbed him in the chest with a knife. King survived an attempted assassination only reinforced by dedication to nonviolence. The experience lasted a few days and deepened my faith um, of of reverence of the spirit of nonviolence. And necessary social change is peace will peacefully or has peacefully taken place, according to Dr. King. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to find out more about the Mon Montgomery bus boycott, you can go to uh, the History Channel, so www.history.com forward forward slash Black History Martin Luther King Jr. And um, I want to bring up two other uh, resources here. Uh, the Rosa Parks Museum is located at Troy University um, in Montgomery, Alabama. So we can go to that page. Icon Rosa Parks. Um, I don't know if because of COVID if they're open or not, but you might want to check if anybody um, is uh, in, who's watching the show, 
um, who's in Alabama um, at the time. But um, the museum's collection contains a number of historical, uh, historical significant artifacts, including the original fingerprint arrest of Rose of Miss Park in 1950s era Montgomery Civil Rights Bus Boycott, original works and statutory and uh, quilts, court documents and police reports. Um, and it also has the original bus there. So you might, you can check that out. Or the, a part of the bus uh, at the museum. So for more information on um, the Rosa Parks Museum, you can go to www.troy.edu. That's www.troy, T-R-O-Y dot E-D-U. It's a university in Alabama. Uh, and um, also one more resource uh, that I would like to let everybody know about. Um, there's a TV movie that was done in 1970s we can um, talk about it for a couple of minutes. King is a 1978 American television miniseries based on the life of Martin Luther King Jr., the civil rights leader. It aired in three consecutive nights on NBC from February 12th to February 14th, 1978. It starred uh, Paul Winfield and Cicely Tyson. Let's take a look at King from 1978. Let's take a look at the trailer of the life. Uh, it's um, a dramatization of the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Let's take a look at this. There comes a time when people get tired yeah. of being trampled over by the iron feet of oppression. when people get tired of being flung across the abyss of humiliation. I have a dream today. And when we let freedom ring, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing the words of that old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we're free at last. But it doesn't matter to me now because I've been to the mountaintop. And I've looked over and I have seen the promised land. Uh, thank you for watching today. This uh, program will also, if it's not airing uh, now, it, it will also air in January. I would like to thank our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and many others, including the partnership of um, the American Association for the Blind of, of, <clears throat> of Vermont and the Division for the Blind of uh, Vermont as well as many others, including the Montpelier, the Sustainable Montpelier Coalition and um, the um, uh, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Armin Seiler. <laughs> Remember, civil rights is important to people with special needs and many others around the world. See you next time. Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, 
empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Able Done On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Able Then On Air has been seen in the following publications, Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England Chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists.